Hey guys, this is my Steadicam based on the Steadicam Merlin design. Um, I'm going to try to go quickly through this. Uh, it's taken a, I've done a few different sh takes of this and it's taken more than 10 minutes, so we don't want to do that. YouTube will cut you off, right? We won't let you upload that uh, anything longer than 10 minutes. Um, basically, I'm going to go through all the parts that you'll need uh, for each, each piece and then kind of briefly walk through how to put it together and that's, that's about it. Um, I'll show some demos of it later. Uh, so for the gimbal, uh, you need the Traxxas. Now this is not my final design. I need to, to cut this off. I just don't have a saw here uh, to shorten it. But this is exactly what it looks like. The Traxxas 1951. It comes with uh, a male and female version. Um, and actually these fit on top of each other. But you don't really need the female one. I just put it together for the heck of it. Um, use the male side. Uh, then you use the bearing here. There's a bearing in there. That bearing is... Um, this uh, World Industries TNT oiled speed bearings, they're skateboard bearings. You can use any bearing you want, pretty much, the skateboard bearings at least. Um, these are just cheaper, the cheapest ones I found, like 12 to $14, I can't remember what it was, uh, at Academy, uh, a sports store. Um, anyways, this is a slip and thread uh, adapter, uh, half inch uh, piping uh, threaded on this side. The slips on this side where you put the bearing um, and I did that that way you could attach a, a nice handle to it I think this is a little three inch fitting with a cap um, I used schedule 80 for the pipes and then for any of the adapters I used uh, schedule um, 40 it's a little cheaper um, I use schedule 80 here since it's a little bit sturdier uh, as far as when you're attaching the weight so you can so you won't crack it um, I'm not sure if you'd really even crack a uh, schedule 40 to be honest but this is just sturdier um, Anyways, uh, so to do this, um, to get the bearing set in here, um, the, this, this design is similar to, um, or the, using this skateboard at least, is, is similar, and this Traxxas uh, U-joint uh, is similar to WSC later, uh, WSC L-A-T-E-R, the YouTube user, um, so credits go to him on, on that one. Um, some other YouTube users that, that I've seen use, uh, you know, PVC, but they set it a little bit deeper. I don't see the need for that. Uh, there is a there's one situation where you could possibly need to set it in deeper to uh, if you're going to cut this all the way off and have your U joint sitting inside here. The lip where it would rest is about right there, so you could have room to put this inside of it, and then you could use this lip here on the outside to be like kind of like a guard to push up against that. Because these, you know, I can't rotate there. I can start to about right there. Um, there's not a whole lot of range, smooth range at least. Once you go past that, it kind of locks. Now you can shave this down a bit. You're going to lose some structural integrity there, though, if you do, uh, but uh, not too much. I did mine a little bit. So it gives you pretty decent range, but if that makes sense, um, good. If not, um, <laughs> tough. I'm running out of time to explain it. Um, if you have questions about what I just uh, meant, um, put it in the comments or send me a message. Um, for the piping here, for the actual the the frame, I used uh, like I said the uh, schedule 40 cap. It was like 40 cents. It's like a buck for this 10 uh, 10 inch um, nipple, um, a 90 degree, another 10 inch nipple, a 90 degree, an 8 inch. I did uh, that away. Let me move these bags out of the way. Uh, that way you could have room for your arm. Like if you're holding the handle here. Sometimes your arm would hit, a ten, if it was 10 inches, it would come out about right there or so. Um, and that just gives your arm a little bit more room to, uh, to be more straight up and down so that you don't, the wrist angle and stuff, it just kind of hurts your wrist sometimes if you use it too long. Uh, it's just a more natural feeling if you can hold it straight up and down instead of at an angle. So, you know, the shorter this, actually probably the better, but um, I wanted to make sure I had enough room to be able to adjust these weights, so I used an 8 inch. You can adjust that as you want, I guess. Uh, you can attempt to use a 10 inch if you'd like, but I don't see the need. So, um, for the weights, I used uh, these are Fender washers. Uh, it's this brand right here. Uh, they are um, one fourth by one and one fourth size um, washers. They're like seven bucks for this pack of 30, so that's that was pretty decent. Uh, they have a few of the extra ones. I made Johnny Lee's of Steadicam as well, and. Uh, had the larger ones. I think these are one fourth by one and one half diameter, I believe. So I just had a couple extra I put on that one. Um, so uh, 
to mount this, these mounts here are these. Uh, they are uh, conduit hangers, half inch. Um, you need about five of those. Um, and then you can get these conduit mounts, I believe is what they're called. Um, they're basically little toothed um, snap-on. They snap on. Uh, mounts that you can mount stuff to them if you wanted to add weights to it. I guess you technically could, but I basically use those as weightless trim adjustments so that once you get this perfectly balanced, or the point of a Merlin is actually to have it slightly uh, bottom heavy, not a whole, whole lot, uh, so that your drop time is about one second is the ideal, uh, what most people report as being ideal. Uh, I've heard of some people going a little bit longer than one second, but uh, so even less bottom heavy. But the more bottom heavy you are, the less likely you're going to have uh, wind and, you know, if an insect lands on your camera or, you know, if raindrop for, you know, hits the camera, it will throw it off balance a little bit. So the point is, is to, to not have that happen and so you make it a little bit more bottom heavy. Anyways, this trim will allow you to, and I've got these pieces on each, each of the bars, uh, I allow you to... Uh, to move it forward and back up and down that way you can tilt your camera uh, however you want it so if you want it to have it slightly up tilted and down tilted um, yeah so anyways once you get it balanced you can move this uh, and it's easier instead of having to unscrew this every time because you, you pretty much you need a socket set to, to take this off and you know keep readjusting it so um, once you get it stable I'd rather leave it there as is uh, it comes with this. Uh, you need to get a, a screw that'll fit this, and uh, the screws I used, uh, they were the uh, these right here. I actually used some some bolts too instead of screws, uh, but this is the one I'm gonna actually I'm gonna redo it with this. Uh, one fourth by one and a half uh, gives you a little bit longer. These are these are a little bit shorter bolts that I used here, but here's the one and a half, and it would probably come out to about right there. It give you a little bit longer um, than what I used here, uh, to, you know, to add more weight if you wanted to. But uh, just a one fourth inch uh, nut and then a, a bolt or a screw, whichever you want. Um, same goes up here. This, I'm not going to explain this because this is Johnny Lee's design uh, for his Steadicam. You can find it on uh, YouTube or the web on his website. Um, but it's the same type of thing here. Uh, that same screw I just showed you going through two lock, uh, lock washers, a nut that tightens this down. Um, this uh, wing nut set right here is a 1 4th 20 um, and then a, a fender washer I think it's the 1 and 1 half diameter but 1 4th hole um, and you still use this thing where you, you basically put a, a screw in the middle hammer it down through a hole like this you would put the screw in the middle hammer it to make it convex uh, or concave on this side depending on how you look at it that way when you mount it to your camera it, it distributes the weight evenly along the, along the ring instead of out here uh, takes the pressure away from that little spot as, as, as he stated in his videos um, to attach the uh, the u-joint to the uh, bearing in here uh, you need these is what I used at least for this brand of u-joint um, it's 10 by uh, by a half uh, sheet metal screws uh, they work pretty good and they will, you know, of course, self-thread if you have to cut this off because I don't think there's thread on the inside that, that deep. Um, so, yeah, um, to seat the bearing, this World Industries TNT bearings, you basically take this, this slip side, you put the bearing up against it, and you get you a nice vice grip. And you line it up, you, you get it tight, and then before you push it in, you make sure that the it's right around here. You know, use some oil or whatever before you do that if you want on the inside. I, that's what I did. I put oil on the inside and along the outside of edge of the bearing. And then I squeezed it together and it popped in. Um, I'm running out of time, so I've got to go quick. Uh, this was mounted with a, uh, those, like I said, those screws. But I, I used a washer on the inside and a washer on the outside to keep that steady because this is, this is curved a little bit. As you can see, it's got a curve right there. So I used a washer to keep it straight. Uh, washer on the inside make sure when you do the washer you don't go past the part that rotates uh, so basically on that gold that gold inner band you don't want to go past that so that is it any questions uh, let me know uh, and I think I covered pretty much everything as far as what you need to buy so good luck